Hi guys, Wen here, Vaping Wen, and today I have the Typhon GT, and uh, I'm going to show you how I recoil it to a micro coil with cotton. Now, um, I just got the Typhon yesterday, and um, you know I've been getting questions about how I call my uh, setup, and how do I get it from not gurgling or leaking. Um, to be frank, I didn't know this was a big issue among uh, Typhon users But nevertheless, I'm going to try and give it a shot and uh, show you how I get my Typhon GT up and running um, Currently, um, I'm running on the uh, new DNA mod which I received. This is the Chichap mod And uh, since I'm going to be running it on a DNA mod, I'm going to be making the coil a bit higher ohm than I regularly would uh, I called this at 1.1 before this and I was using this on the mechanical mod uh, you know, I tend to run calls about 1 ohm, 0 0.9 ohms on Mac mods But since I'm going to be using this on the uh, Kichak uh, I'm going to be aiming for a 1.3 to 1.5 coil So okay, enough talking, I'm going to move the camera down And you can have a look at how I recall my Typhon GT Alright, so I've moved the uh, camera to face down and uh, the first thing you'll notice is my brand new cockboard. <laughs> I'm going to use this to uh, do my close-ups and hopefully this helps the camera focus a bit. Uh, okay, so enough talk. Let's get to it. What I'm going to be using today is uh, the Typhoon GT and this is just broken down in parts. I took it apart and gave it a good wash just now. You don't have to do that every time you recoil, but um, it's a practice which I have. Uh, I like to keep the clean, uh, tank clean and uh, you know I always change my e-liquids. So it's a good way to make sure that the taste don't overlap between liquids. I also have a nail clipper, some uh, 28 gauge kanthal, a pair of tweezers and a small screwdriver. Now this screwdriver isn't going to be used to screw things in but it's going to be used to build the coil on mm, as for exact measurements this screwdriver is let's see this screwdriver is about 2 mil 2 mm big let's see that's that focus 2 mm yep uh, I'm not using it because it's 2 mm but I'm using it because it fits very nicely in the channels of the Typhon GT. Let's see if we can get this to focus a bit better. Okay, let's try that now. Okay, um, right, you see the screwdriver, it fits nicely in the channel, and this means that the coil and hence the wick later would be of a good size. We don't want the coil to be too big and the wick too thick and we don't want the coil to be too small and the wick too small all right first things first i'm going to put the channel or rather the gates back on the typhon gt a bit of water there let me just wipe that off and let's just get this aligned and okay let's push that down now uh, we're going to make the micro coil itself and as I mentioned earlier, I want the resistance to be a bit higher than what I had before. Before it was at 1.1 ohm and that was based on 6 loops I believe. 6 loops around my screwdriver. Since I want to get it at about 1.3 to 1.5, we're going to go maybe 7 loops. So it's very easy to make a micro call. First of all, you just catch one end of your canthal with your thumb and we just spin the canthal around the screwdriver I apologize if this goes out of focus or out of frame but I'm just trying to make my micro call as tidy as I can on the screwdriver now let's see and just like that it's done let's just count how many um, loops that we have here okay that's one two three four five six and seven so I have seven loops here yep seven loops on my macro call I'm just gonna push that together first and mount this on 
the base of the Typhoon GT. Now when you're building calls, you always have a section where the leads either end up on top of or below off. So I could do it this way, mount it this way with the leads on top and that would set my call a bit lower, nearer to the air hole. Or I could do it the other way with the call high up from the air hole. Um, although I haven't faced this problem with the Typhoon just yet, I would not recommend putting the call too close to the air hole and uh, that sort of uh, reflects my principles when I was building uh, calls for the fogger because if your call is too close and your cotton is too close to the bottom you could be indirectly creating some vacuum there or some suction action and that will turn your wick into a straw of sorts and that will artificially draw liquid out but anyway enough of that our call is not going there it's going a bit higher up and you just leave your, your screwdriver in the coil while you lock your leads down so I'm going to lock this one here and this one here don't worry the main thing is to lock one down first and you will have uh, you'll be easy to adjust your call later so I'm just going to lock one call down first like so and then the other over here like so alright looking at my call the position isn't very nicely over the air hole it's actually a bit off the air hole it's not even sitting straight but since we have the screwdriver in it we can easily adjust and even move the position of the call by rolling the screwdriver over now we want it just in the middle like that not too far to the left not too far to the right and we remove this okay we've got that down we've got our leads locked down let's just uh, check one more time yes securely locked down and uh, I'm just gonna trim off the excess with my screwdriver uh, with my screwdriver <laughs> with my nail clipper let's put that here and this part trim it off here whoa okay and basically within the span of a couple of minutes we already have our call set up here but this is not a working micro call just yet because I'm not sure if all the calls are touching each other correctly so I need to pulse this up and uh, make sure that my calls are touching mm, I haven't tried pulsing with a DNA yet I don't want to burn the calls or anything like that so I'm just going to be using a MacMod the way I usually do and uh, I'm going to be using the PEPS so I'm just going to put this down give it a quick fire and see how the calls light up Right, you notice straight away that the calls aren't lighting up as a micro call should not from the middle but from the front and end so simple we just use a tweezer and press the calls together we pulse and we press the calls together again we pulse and we press the calls together again Okay, the calls look nice and tight now. It should be going from in to out. And it is. And when you let go, it um, dims from out to in. I'm pretty happy with that coil. It's going pretty well. And just to illustrate the um, distance between the base and the coil, I'm just going to take out these to show it to you see there is a fair gap in between the coil and the base the air tube all right now again this is not the only way or the be all end all way of coiling the typhon this is just the way that i do it and i've been lucky not to get any sort of uh, leaks or gurgles by doing it this way 
okay I'm just going to check the resistance of this call right now again this is a 7 rep um, 28 AWG and if I'm right it should meter at about 1.3 1.4 now let's turn on the DNA uh, funny I'm still getting 1.1 1.0 even uh, that is odd indeed and uh, we can sort of see why the calls aren't lighting up from out to in as a macro call should let's continue pressing it a bit hmm the resistance seems to have settled at 1.1 ohm and I've just dropped my pliers oh that's a really hot coil um, I wouldn't have a problem running this if I was running it on a mechanical mod but since I'm running it on a DNA20 um, I really would like the resistance to be a bit higher 1.2 1.1 is still a bit low for me for my personal liking uh, ideally 1.5 well, no worries with the magic of video editing I'm just gonna pop in a new call same technique but just adding a few more loops and hopefully it will meter as I want it to Okay, now uh, thanks to the magic of video editing, <laughs> we're back and I've popped in a 1.5 ohm coil into my Typhon GT. And as you can see, it's exactly the same coil. I did it the exact same way, with the only exception that instead of 7 reps on, as on the previous coil, I now have a total of 10 reps. The distance of the coil to the air hole is the same and the positioning in between the poles uh, is the same as well. The only thing that's changed is that I've added an additional uh, three more reps to the coil. Okay, so I'm just going to close the channels now, put this gutter in and now the probably the most important part of building your coil is putting in the cotton wick. I'm just going to be using some regular sterilized cotton balls. Pull off a bit here to be used as the wick. And you know, it's really not much cotton at all. It's only this much. And I'm just going to, what do you call, roll up one end thread that through the coil let's try that again mm. thread that through the coil okay and just pull roll and pull roll and pull okay now one of my favorite things about the Typhon is that these channels they are locked in a certain position so you can turn them left or right either way to suit the position of your coil ideally you want to have your wick going perfectly straight so please do sort of uh, move your gates in a way and I don't want it to be twisted in any way I just want it to go straight and there you go it's wicked here now what I like to do instead of trimming it straight away I like to put on the cap first like so oops alright the caps are on and now I'll trim my wicks maybe just a little out of away from the gates
okay one a little bit sticking out not completely flush you see and that completely closes off the gate and it's the same on the other side just a bit off and that closes off the gate on this side all right now I know for a fact that the call works so I'm not even going to prime bother priming the wick I'm just going to go straight ahead and fill up the tank with my e-liquid um, today I'm going to be using tray candy it's been steeping for a while and already you see the color has changed from the color which I originally got it in it was much lighter when I first got it all right now I'm just going to fill up the tank and the Typhoon GT holds a good 5 mils of liquid in there enough to last you a whole day uh, that looks pretty full so I'm good with that and I'm just going to pop this in and screw it down that's firm, we turn it over and it's only going to take a few seconds for the wicks to get saturated I particularly like this brand of sterilized cotton balls because I find that the wicks take on flavor very quickly there is very little of that sort of breaking in period for them in fact if I mount this onto my Etty right now I probably would get a very flavorful vape straight away now I'm just going to tidy up everything here um, pop the Typhoon back on my mod and give it a vape all right moving camera up now okay guys we move the camera back up and let's take a quick vape very nice um, let's just give this a quick test just a draw without any firing no gurgling there uh, a quick check on the air hole no leakage there one of the things which I've realized uh, about the Typhoon is that since it's a gravity gravity tank not gravity tank but the juice flow works on gravity system so one thing that I realized is that if you fill the tank too full the initial time uh, if you fill it all the way till the edge before you push uh, you secure it onto the tank you could cause uh, you could potentially cause the liquid to rush into your chamber uh, since the negative pressure when you push it in the liquid has nowhere else to go so it's get pushed into the chamber and that could cause your initial few draws to get flooded uh, because your wick is oversaturated and that's because of pressure pushing everything into it the same holds true for things like the k fun if you um, don't properly close the air channel uh, when you feel on the top it will flood the tank the uh, chamber i mean uh, so another tip that you should have is not to feel the tank too too full before you attach it to your atty uh, to the base rather now um, it's still reading 1.5 and I've bumped up the wattage to 15 watts this is where I want my coil to be and the ohmish that I want it to be and that's because I want to vape it at 15 watts and maybe higher uh, with a 1.1 ohm coil it might get too hot and melt the insulators inside if it doesn't it will definitely take up a lot of battery life so I think this is a good balance but what would I know this is my second day no this is my first day using the DNA mod <laughs> I've only had it for a couple of hours mm, anyway I hope that that video was helpful in a bit and I hope that that addressed some of the questions that you may have had about setting up a cotton wick in your Typhon Again, just a quick simple steps. Set up your coil. Make sure the micro coils are tight uh, on the screwdriver before you actually start mounting it in. That will save you a lot of problems. 
um, pulse and press the claws together until they glow from the in out and from the out back in when you let go after that uh, line up your wick try and make it as straight as possible feel free to move your channels around so that they line up as straight as they can with the wick mm, don't put your call too near to the air hole because you will cause some artificial pressure in the cha in the chamber if it's too near uh, and you might notice that the main difference between this coiling method and the how I do cotton on the fogger you know on the fogger I put a sort of S shape inside the chamber but for this one it's just straight up and trimmed a little bit close to the chambers itself all right with that please do go ahead and try this on your own <laughs> I almost called it fogger <laughs> try this on your own Typhon GT let me know how it works out if it doesn't work out if it still flirts just try and uh, go over those key points again you might have missed something or you might have overlooked something if it doesn't work feel free to send me a message on Facebook and I'll try my best to help you out all right till then Vapon brothers I'm going to OD on my new setup tonight. Uh, have a good week ahead. Good night.